All in the golden afternoon in fancy, let's pursue the dream child moving through a land of wonders, wild and new. In friendly chat with bird or beast, and half believe it true. Just as if someone was kissing the window all over outside. I wonder if the rain loves the trees and the fields, that it kisses him so gently. And later, when it turns to snow. Oh, Kitty, let's pretend. Let's pretend it covers them up snug with the white curls and says, Go to sleep, darlings, till summer comes again. And when they wake up in summer, Kitty, they dress themselves all in green. We dance about whenever the wind blows. Alice, a childish story take, and with a gentle hand lay it where childhood's dreams are twined in memory's mystic band. Oh, Kitty, I wonder how late it's getting. <laughs> Duchess, the Duchess. Oh dear, won't she be savage if I've kept her waiting? Oh, where can I have dropped them? Oh, sir, if you please, sir. Why, Mary Ann, what are you doing out here? Go and fetch me a pan and a pair of gloves. Quick now. Why? He took me for his housemaid. How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I am. How queer everything is today. Let me think. Was I the same when I woke up this morning? I almost think I can remember 
feeling a little different. But if I'm not the same, the next question is, who in the world am I? I'm sure I can't be Ada, for her hair goes in such long ringlets. And I'm sure I can't be Mabel, for I know all sorts of things. And she, oh, she knows such a very little. I'll try if I know all the things I used to know. Now let me see. Four times five is twelve. And four times six is thirteen. And four times seven... Oh, no. That's all wrong, I'm certain. But I must be Mabel after all. Oh. Who are you? I hardly know who I am, so just at present. I know who I was yesterday, but I must have changed since then. What do you mean by that? Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir, because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see. Well, I can't put it any more clearly, but I can't understand it myself to begin with. And being different sizes in a day is very confusing. It isn't. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet. All I know is, it feels very queer to me. You? Who are you? I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? Come back. I have something important to say. Gee? Keep your temper. Is that all? No. So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am. You see, I can't remember things as I used. Can't remember what things? Well, I've tried multiplication. But it all came different. Try poetry. Poetry? Repeat your old father, William. You are old father, William, the young man said. You are old father, William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it would injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old to be youth, as I mentioned before, and have grown most uncommonly fat. Yet you turned a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? I have answered your questions, and that is enough. Said his father, don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. That was not said right. Not quite right, I'm afraid. Some of the words have got a little altered. It is wrong from beginning to end. So you think, what size do you want to be? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It's a very good height indeed. But I'm not used to it. You'll get used to it in time. One side will make you grow taller, the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Of the mushroom. But which is which? An invitation from the Queen to play croquet. From the Queen, an invitation for the Duchess to play croquet. sort of use in your knocking. 
And that for two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are. Secondly, because they're making such a noise inside that no one could possibly hear you. Please, then, how am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That is the first question, you know. Oh, there's no use talking to him. He's perfectly idiotic. <laughs> It's a Cheshire cat, uh, cat, and that's why. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Ah, ah, pig! I didn't know Cheshire cats always grin. In fact, I didn't know cats could grin. You don't know much, and that's a fact. Oh, please, mind what you're doing. Please, mind his precious nose. If everybody would mind their own business, the world would go around at you a lot faster than it does. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. I speak superbly to my boy and beat him when he sneezes, for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he sneezes. Wow, 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 I must go and get ready to play croquet with the queen. For if I'm late, you know, she'll have my head. If I don't take this child away with me, they'll surely kill it in a day or two. Wouldn't it be murder to leave it behind? Don't grunt. That's not at all a proper way of expressing yourself. If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, I have nothing more to do with you. Ooh. It has grown up. It would have made a dreadfully ugly child. But it makes rather a handsome pig, I think. And what ought I do now, I wonder? The black kitten will miss me very much tonight, I should think. Oh, my dear kitty, I wonder if I shall ever see you anymore. Oh, Cheshire Puss, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to walk from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't much care where. So long as it's somewhere. To the right lives a hatter. To the left lives a March Hare. Do you play croquet with the Queen today? I should like it very much, but I haven't been invited yet. You'll see me there. <laughs> By the by, what became of the baby? It turned into a pig. Thought it would. Did you say pig or fig? I said pig. I thought you did. I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. Oh. seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat. It's the most curious thing I ever saw in all my life. Oh, curiouser and curiouser. Now I'm in a world of anxious flow by. Why, it's twins. 
If you think they're waxworks, you ought to pay, you know. Waxworks weren't made to be looked at for nothing, no harm. Contrariwise, if you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm sure I'm very sorry. I was thinking, which is the best way out of this wood? Would you tell me, please? You've begun wrong. The first thing to do on a visit is to say how do you do and shake hands. You like poetry? Well, yes. Pretty well. well what shall we repeat to her? The wall of the carpenter. It's longest. Oh, if it's very long, would you tell me, please? The sun was well? shining on the sea. Shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd because it was... The middle of the night. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. <laughs> With us, the walrus did beseech a pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. The eldest oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head. Meaning to say he did not choose to leave his oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried up all eager for the treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they, they hadn't, hadn't any feet. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so. And then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, Talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax and cabbages and kings and why the sea is boiling hot and where the pigs have a loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. Now, if, if you're, you're ready, ready, oysters dear, we can begin to feed. But not a mass, the oysters cried. Turning a little blue After such kindness That would be a dismal thing to do The night is fine The walrus said Do you admire the view? It seems a shame The walrus said to ply them such a trick after we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick the carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick For you, 
Flora said, I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears he sorted out those of the largest size. Holding his pocket handkerchief before his three big eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter, you had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they be. Turn every one. I like the Boris best because, you see, he was a little sorry for the poor oysters. He ate more than the carpenter, though. He held his handkerchief in front so the carpenter couldn't see how many he took, contrary-wise. Then they were both very unpleasant characters. Are there any lions or tigers about here? It's only the Red King snoring. Come, Come and, and look, look at him. him. Isn't he a lovely sight? Fits to snore his head off. He's dreaming now. And do you know what he's dreaming about? Nobody can guess that. Why, about you. <laughs> and if he left off dreaming about you, where do you suppose you'd be? Not you. You'd be nowhere. You're only a sort of a thing in his dream. If that there king was to wake, you'd go out. Bang! Knock a candle. <laughs> I shouldn't. Besides, if I'm only a sort of thing in his dream, what are you I should like to know? Ditto, 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 ditto. You'll be waking him, I'm afraid. Well, it's no use your talking about waking him. You know very well that you're not real. Well, I hope you don't suppose those are real tears. I know they're only talking nonsense. And it's foolish to cry about it. At any rate, I'd better be finding my way out of this wood. Do you think it's going to rain? No, I don't think it is. At least, not under here. But it may rain outside. It may, if it chooses. We've no objection. No how. Contrarywise. <laughs> a raven like a writing desk. Come, we should have some fun now. I believe I can guess that. You mean you think you could find out the answer to it? Exactly so. Then why don't you say what you mean? I do, at least. At least I mean what I say. No. And that's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit. Why, you might as well say that I see what I eat. It's the same thing as I eat what I see. You might just as well say that I like what I get. It's the same as I get what I like. You might just as well say that I breathe what I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same with you. <sighs> what day of the month is it? The fourth. Two days wrong. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works. It was the best butter. Yes, but some crumbs must have got in as well. You shouldn't have put it in with the bread knife. It was the best butter, you know. The Dormouse is asleep again. <laughs> oh, of course. Just what I was going to remark myself. Oh. 
Have you guessed the riddle yet? No, I give it up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea. Nor I. Then I think you might do something better with the time than wasting it in asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. And if you only stayed on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you like with the clock. Is that the way you manage? No, not I. We quarreled last March, just before he went mad, you know. It was at the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts. And I had to sing, Twinkle, twinkle, little bat. How I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps? I've heard something like it. Well, I'd hardly finished the first verse. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. I'd hardly twinkle, finished the first twinkle, verse. Twinkle, I'd hardly fit. Wake up, Dormouse. I wasn't asleep. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Uh. Well, I'd hardly finish the first verse when the Queen bawled out, he's murdering the time off with his head. How dreadfully savage. And ever since then, he won't do a thing I ask. It's always six o'clock now. Is that the reason so many tea things are put out here? Yes, that's it. It's always tea time. We've no time to wash the things between whiles. Then you keep moving round, I suppose. Exactly so, as the things get used up. But when you come to the beginning oh. again... Suppose we change the subject. But I don't understand. Well, then you shouldn't talk. I want a clean cup. Let's all move one place on. It's the stupidest tea party I ever was at in all my life. I'll never go there again. I've got back to that lovely garden. Why, those gardens are spades. That's very curious, too. Or is it? Please, would you tell me why you're painting those roses? Why, the fact is, miss, this year ought to have been a red rose tree, and we put in a white one by mistake. And if the queen was to find out, we'd all have our heads cut off, you know. But the queen, the queen! Is this? May it please your majesty, we were trying. I see. Off with their heads. Are their heads off? Their heads are gone, my dear. That's right. Who is this? Idiot. What's your name? My name is Alice, so please, your majesty. Why? You're only a pack of cards. I mean to be afraid of you. Off with her head. Off with her head. Nonsense. Consider, my dear, she's only a child. Hmm. Can you play croquet? Yes. Well, come on, then. Get to your places. <laughs> How glad I am to see you again, you dear old thing. You've been thinking. That's why you're, you can't talk. I can't think of the, what the moral of that is right now, but I shall think of it in a moment. Perhaps he hasn't one. Tut-tut, child. Everything has a moral if you can find it. Oh, the game's playing rather little now, don't you think? So it is. And the moral of that is, oh, it is love. It is love that makes the world go round. I dare say you're wondering why I don't put my arm around you. The reason is, I'm rather in doubt about the, the 
temper of your uh, flamingo. Shall I try the experiment? It might bite. Very true. Flamingos and mustard both bite. And the moral of that is, birds of a feather flock together. Mustard isn't a bird. Right again. What a clear way you have of putting things. And the moral of that is, be what you would seem to be. Or, if you'd like it put more simply, never imagine yourself to be otherwise than what it might appear to those that uh, you might have been or what you might have been was not otherwise than what you, you might have been, or which would appear to them to be uh, uh, otherwise. I think I should understand that better if I had it written down. But I can't quite follow it as you say it. That's nothing to what I could say if I tried. Now, the moral of that is, psst, the moral of that, a nice day, your majesty. Oh. Now, I give you fair warning. Either you or your head must be off, and that in about half no time. Take your choice. <sighs> Have you seen the mock turtle yet? Mock turtle is. It's the thing mock turtle soup is made from. I never saw one nor heard of one before. Come on then, he shall tell you his history. <laughs> you are all part. Griffon. Griffon. Griffon! What's this? Well, the king says it's a child. We only found it today. I always thought they were fabulous monsters. Is it alive? Well, it can talk. But up, ah, lazy thing. Up and take this, uh, take it to see the mock turtle and to hear his history. I must go see after a trial I have ordered. <clears throat> Off with his head. Off with her head. <clears throat> Off with her head! Do you know, I always thought griffins were fabulous monsters. I never saw one alive before. You, come. What are you, really? Well, I, I... Uh, well, I can see you're trying to invent something. No, I, I, I'm a little girl. <laughs> a likely story. Well, now that we've seen each other, if you'll believe in me, I'll believe in you. Is that a bargain? Yes, if you like. Come. Curious, He hasn't got no sorrow. <laughs> this here child, she wants for to know your history, she do. Uh, I'll tell it her. Sit down, both of you. And don't speak a word till I've finished. Once, <laughs> I was a real turtle. <laughs> Drive on, old fella, and don't be all gay about it. When we were little, we went to school in the sea. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? We called him Tortoise because he taught us. Really, you are very dull. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question. Yes, we went to school in the sea, though you mayn't believe it. We had the best of education. I took the regular course. Oh, what was that? Reeling and writhing to begin with, of course. And mystery, mystery, ancient and modern. And there was theography. So there was, so there was. And the different branches of arithmetic, ambition, distraction, uglification and derision. I never heard of uglification. What is it? Never heard of uglification? You know what a beautifier is, I suppose. Well, yes, it means to, uh, to make anything prettier. Well, then, if you don't know what to uglify is, you are a simpleton. Oh, and how many hours a day did you do lessons? 
Oh, ten hours the first day, nine the next, eight, and so on. What a curious plan. That's the reason they call lessons, because they lessen from day to day. Then the eleventh day must have been a holiday. Of course it was. But how did you manage on the twelfth? <laughs> That's enough of our lessons. Tell us something about games. Oh. <laughs> Same as if he had a bone in his throat, you know. You may not have lived much under the sea. I haven't. And so perhaps you were never introduced to a, a lobster. Well, I once tasted. So you have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No. What sort of a dance is it? Why? First you form two lines along the seashore. Uh, each with a lobster as a partner. Then you throw the lobsters out to sea. Swim out after them. Change lobsters. And back to land again. That's all the first figure. There's more. Would you like to see a little of it? We can do it without the lobsters, you know. Which shall sing? Oh, you sing. I've forgotten the words. Will you walk a little faster, said the whiting to a snail. There's a porpoise close behind me, and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on the shingle, won't you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you? Won't you join the dance? Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Won't you join the dance? You can really have no notion how delightful it will be when they take us up and throw us with the lobsters out to sea. The further off from A England, the nearer it is to France. Then turn off pale, beloved snail, but come with me and join the dance. Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Won't you join the dance? Will you, won't you? Will you, won't you? Won't you join the dance? to watch. But if I'd been the whiting in the song, I would have said to the porpoise, keep back, please. We don't want you with us. Oh, they were obliged to have him. No wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. Wouldn't it, really? Oh, of course not. Why, if a fish came up to me and told me he was going on a journey, I'd say to him, with what porpoise? Don't you mean purpose? I mean what I say. Shall we try another figure of the lobster quidrill? Or would you like the Mock Turtle to sing a song? Oh, a song, please, if the Mock Turtle would be so kind. Well, no accounting for taste. Sing her turtle soup, old fella. <laughs> Beautiful soup, so rich and green. Waiting in a hot tureen, who for such dainties would not stoop. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening. A 
a few of soup. Who cares for fish, the game, or any other dish? Who would not give all else for two? Any worth only a beautiful soup. Soup of the The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Consider your verdict. Uh, not yet, Your Majesty. Uh, th there's a lot to come before that. Call the first witness. The first witness. I beg pardon, Majesty, for bringing these in, but I hadn't quite finished my tea when I was sent for. Well, you ought to have finished. When did you begin? 14th of March, I think it was. 15th! Write that down, all three dates. Add them up and reduce the answer to ounces and pounds. Take off your hat. It isn't mine. Stolen. I keep them to sell. I've none of my own. I'm a hatter. Give your evidence. And don't be nervous or I'll have you executed on the spot. Uh, I'm a poor man, Majesty. You're a very poor speaker. <laughs> Suppress that dormouse. I'm a poor man, Majesty, and I hadn't we'd just begun me tea not above a week or so ago, and what with the bread and butter getting so thin and the twinkling of the tea? The twinkling of what? It began with the tea. Well, of course twinkling begins with the tea. Do you take me for a dunce? Oh, I'm a poor man, Majesty, and most things twinkled after that. Only the March Hare said... I didn't! You did! I deny it! He denies it. Leave out that part. Go on, and after that... And after that, I can't remember. If that's all you know, you may go. Just take his head off outside. Call the next witness. Uh, if you please, Majesty, uh, this piece of paper has just been picked up. It, it, it's a set of verses. Are they in the prisoner's handwriting? No, they're not. And that's the queerest part about it. Oh, he must have imitated someone else's hand. Please, Your Majesty, I didn't write it, and they can't prove I did. There's no name signed at the end. Well, if you didn't sign it, that only makes matters worse. You must have meant some mischief, or you'd have signed your name like an honest man. <laughs> that proves his guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. Why, you don't even know what the verses are about. Read them. Where shall 
shall I begin, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning and go on until you come to the end, then stop. <laughs> they told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character but said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? Do I look like He sent them word I had not gone. We know it to be true. If she should push the matter on, what would become of you? Well, what indeed? Nothing could be clearer than that. I gave her one, they gave him two, you gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. I gave her one, they gave him two, you gave us three or more. They all returned from him to you, though they were mine before. If I or she should chance to be involved in this affair, he trusts to you to set them free exactly as they were. He trusts to you to set them free exactly as we were. My notion was that you had been before she had this fit, an obstacle that came between him and ourselves and it. Before she had this fit, before she had this fit, an obstacle that came between him and ourselves and it, an obstacle that came between him and ourselves and it. You never had fits, my dear, I think. Never. Don't let her know she liked them best, for this will never be a secret gift from all the rest between herself and me. A secret gift from all the rest between yourself and me. A secret gift from all the rest between yourself and me. A secret gift from all the rest. A secret gift from all the rest. A secret gift from all the rest. A secret gift between yourself and me. That's the most important piece of evidence we've heard yet. So now let the jury. If Richard can explain it, I'll give him sixpence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. She doesn't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. Well, if there's no meaning in it, that saves a world of trouble, as we didn't try to find any. And yet I don't know. What do you know about this business? Nothing. Nothing whatever? Nothing whatever. That's very important. <clears throat> unimportant, your majesty means, of course. Oh, unimportant, of course I meant. Important, unimportant, important, unimportant, imp, um. Unimportant, yes, to be sure. Consider your verdict. No, no, sentence first, verdict afterwards. Stop that nonsense! The idea of having the sentence first! Hold your tongue! I won't! Off with her head! Off with her head! Off with her head! Who cares for you? You're nothing but a pack of cards! Where do you come from? Where are you going? Look up! Speak nicely and don't twiddle your fingers! You see, I've lost my way. I don't know what you mean by your way. All the ways about here belong to me. But why did you come out here at all? Curtsy when you're thinking what to say. It saves time. I only wanted to see what the garden was like, Your Majesty. That's right. But when you say gardens, I've seen gardens compared with which this would be a wilderness. And I thought I'd try and find my way to the top of that hill. When you say hill, I could show you hills compared with which you'd call that a valley. No, I shouldn't, you know. A hill can't be a valley. That would be nonsense. You may call it nonsense if you like, but I've heard nonsense compared with which that would be as sensible as a dictionary. Now! Faster! Faster! That's 
low sort of country. No, here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to stay in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. Now then, just look along that road and tell me what you see. I declare, it's marked up just like a large chessboard. It's a great huge game of chess that's being played all over the world. If this is the world at all, you know. Oh, what fun it is. How I wish I was part of it. I wouldn't mind being a pawn, though I should like to be a queen best. That's easily managed. You can be the white queen's pawn, if you like. And when you get to the eighth square, you'll be a queen. A pawn goes two squares in its first move, you know, and you'll reach the fourth and fifth in no time. You may see the white queen there. She sometimes comes flying through. And the sixth square belongs to Humpty Dumpty. And the seventh... But you make no remark. I didn't know I had to make one just then. You should have said it's extremely kind of you to tell me all this. However, we'll suppose it said, the seventh square is all forest. However, one of the knights will show you the way. And in the eighth square, we shall be queens together. And it's all feasting and fun. Speak in French when you can't think of the English or thing. Turn out your toes when you walk. And remember who you are. Of course, the first thing to do is to make a grand survey of the country I'm going to travel through. Principal rivers? There are none. Principal mountains? I don't think they have any. Principal towns? Oh dear, this is rather a lonely place. Why, if somebody should have really blown off, I'm very glad I happened to be in the way. Why, it's the White Queen, and I'm going to be her pawn. Bread and butter, bread and butter, bread and butter. Am I addressing the White Queen? Well, yes, if that's what you call addressing. It isn't my notion of the thing at all. If Your Majesty would only tell me how to begin, I'll do it as well as I can. But I don't want it done at all. I've been addressing myself for the last two hours. Dear me, every single thing's crooked. And she's all over pins. May I put your shawl straight for you? Oh, I don't know what's the matter with it. It's out of temper, I think. I've pinned it here and I've pinned it there. There's no pleasing it. Can't go straight, you know, if you pin it all one side. And dear me, what a state your hair is in. The brush got entangled in it. And I lost the comb yesterday. Come, you look rather better now. But really, you should have a lady's maid. Oh, I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure. Tuppence a week and jam every other day. I don't want you to hire me. And I don't care for jam. Well, it's very good jam. Well, I don't want any today, at any rate. Well, you couldn't have it today if you did want it. The rule is jam tomorrow and jam yesterday, but never jam today. Well, it must come sometimes to jam today. No, it can't. It's jam every other day. Today isn't any other day, you know. I don't understand you. It's dreadfully confusing. Oh, that's the effect of living backward. Always makes one a little giddy at first. Living backwards? I never heard of such a thing. But there is one great advantage in it, that one's memory works both ways. I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. Oh, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. What sort of things do you remember then? Oh, things that happen the week after next. Now, there's the Duchess, for instance. She's in prison now, being punished, and the trial doesn't even begin till next Wednesday. And of course, the crime comes last of all. But suppose she never commits a crime? Well, that would be all the better, wouldn't it? Were you ever punished? Only for fault. And you were all the better for it, I know. Yes, but then I had done the things I was punished for. Yes, but if you hadn't done them, that would have been better still. Better and better and better. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My finger's bleeding. Ooh, ooh. What is the matter? Have you pricked your finger? No, I haven't pricked it yet, but I soon shall. Ooh, ooh. When do you expect to do it? Well, I fasten my shawl again. The brooch shall come undone directly. Ooh. There, that accounts for the bleeding. Now you understand the way things happen here. 
But why don't you scream now? Well, I've done all the screaming already. What would be the good of having it all over again? But, Your Majesty, if you would only tell me how to get to the eighth square before it gets dark, I should be very glad. Oh, I wish I could manage to be glad. Only I never can remember the rule. You must be very happy living here and being glad whenever you like. Well, I don't know. I never was so small as this before. Never. Home, I mean. And I wasn't ordered about so by all sorts of creatures. It was very pleasant at home. Oh, don't go on like that. Consider what a great girl you are. Consider what a long way you've come today. Consider what a clock it is. Consider anything you like, only don't cry. Can you keep from crying by considering things? Well, that's the way it's done. Nobody can do two things at once, you know. Now, let's consider your age, for instance. How old are you? I'm seven and a half, exactly. Oh, you needn't say exactly. I can believe it without that. Now, I'll give you something to believe. I am just 101, five months and a day. Well, I'm sure I can't believe that. Can't you? Try again. Take a deep breath and shut your eyes. It's no use. I can't believe impossible things. Oh, I dare say you haven't had much practice. When I was your age, I've sometimes managed to believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Ah! There goes the shawl again. I've got it. Now you shall see me pin it on again all by myself. Then I hope your finger is better now. Oh, much better, much better, much better. But your majesty, if you could only tell me. Oh, Jim. It is lonely here. <laughs> Consider what a great girl you are. Consider what a long way you've come today. Turn out your clothes when you walk and remember who you are. Who are you? Well, I can see you're trying to invent something. Off with her head. Off with her head. Consider, my dear, she's only a child. And in the eighth square, you'll be a queen. That's it. I shall be a queen. And I can't have much farther to go. Let me see. The sixth square belongs to Humpty Dumpty. Why, it's Humpty Dumpty himself. And how exactly like an egg he is. It's very provoking to be called an egg. Very. I said you looked like an egg, sir. And some eggs are very pretty, you know. Some people have no more sense than a baby. Oh, what a beautiful belt you've got on. Uh, At least, I should have said a beautiful corvette. Uh, no, a belt, I mean. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. It's a corvette, child. And, uh, as you say, a very beautiful one. It was a present from the White King and Queen. Was it really? Yes, they gave it me. They gave it me uh, for an unbirthday present. What is an unbirthday present? Present given when it isn't your birthday, of course. I like birthday presents best. You don't know what you're talking about. How many days are there in a year? 365. And that shows there are 364 days to receive unbirthday presents and only one for birthday presents, you know. There's glory for you. I don't know what you mean by glory. Of course you don't, till I tell you. I meant there's a nice knockdown argument for you. But glory doesn't mean a nice knockdown argument. When I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. Neither more nor less. <coughs> the piece I'm about to repeat for you was written entirely for your amusement. Thank you. I sent a message to the fish. I told them this is what I wish. The little fish's answer was, we cannot do it, sir, because. Then someone came to me and said, the little fishes are in bed. I took a corkscrew from the shelf. I went to wake them up myself. And when I found the door was locked, I pushed and pulled and kicked and knocked. Oh, don't you think you'll be safer on the ground? Well, of course I don't think so. Why, if ever I did fall, which there's no chance of, but if I did fall, the king himself has promised to... <laughs> you may turn pale if you like. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? No. <laughs> the king has promised with his very own mouth to... To send all of his horses and all of his men. I declare. That's too bad. You've been listening at doors and behind trees, or you couldn't have known it. I haven't, indeed. It's a poem. Ah, yes. Poetry. 
And when I found the door was locked, I pushed and pulled and kicked and knocked. And when I found the door was shut, I tried to turn the handle but. Is that all? That's all. Goodbye. Goodbye? Of all the unsatisfactory people I've ever met. admiring my little box. It's my own invention to keep clothes and sandwiches in. You see, I always carry it upside down so that the rain cannot get in. But the things can get out. Do you know the lid's open? Oh, I didn't know it. Then all the things must have fallen out. Well, the box is no use without them. Ah, there. Now, can you guess why I did that? In case some bees make a nest in it, then I should get the honey. But you've got a beehive or something like one fastened to the saddle. Yes, yes, and it's a very good beehive, one of the best kind. But not a single bee has come near it yet. And this thing is a mouse trap. I suppose the mice keep the bees out. Or the bees keep the mice out, I don't know which. I was wondering what the mouse trap was for. It isn't very likely there would be any mice on the horse's back. Not very likely, perhaps, but you see, if they should come, I don't choose to have them running all about. You see, it's just as well to be provided for everything. And now, you must help me on. I must be on my way. Oh, dear. What makes you say that? Because people don't fall off quite so often when they've had much practice. Oh, I've had plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. The great art of riding is to keep your balance. How can you go on talking head downwards? Oh, what does it matter where my body is? My mind keeps working all the same. <laughs> You're sad. Let me sing you a song to cheer you up. It's long, but it's very, very beautiful. The name of the song is A Sitting on a Gate. And the tune is my own invention. I'll tell thee everything I can. There's little to relate. I saw an aged, aged man A sitting on a gate. He said, I look for butterflies that sleep among the wheat. I make them into mutton pies and sell them on the street. But I was thinking of a way to feed oneself on batter and so go on from day to day, getting a little fatter. I thanked him much for telling me the way he got his wealth, but chiefly for his wish that he might drink my noble health. And now, if e'er by chance I put my fingers into glue, or madly squeeze a right hand foot into a left hand shoe, or if I drop upon my toe a very heavy weight, I weep, for it reminds me so of that old man I used to know whose look was mild, whose speech was slow, whose hair was whiter 
than the snow, whose face was very like a crow, with eyes like cinders all aglow, who's rocked his body to and fro, and seemed distracted with his woe, and muttered mumblingly and low, as if his mouth were full of dough, who snorted like a buffalo. That summer evening long ago, a sitting on a gate. Well, now I must be going. You've only a few more yards to go, and then you'll be a queen. But you'll stay and see me off. Of course. You'll uh, wait and wave your handkerchief when I get to the turn in the road. You see, I think it would comfort me. said a great deal more than that. However, oh, so much more than that. And so you did, you know. Always speak the truth. Think before you speak and write it down afterwards. But I'm sure I didn't mean That's to. That's just what I complain of. You should have meant. What to suppose is the use of a child without any meaning? Why, even a joke should have some meaning. And a child is more important than a joke. I hope. You couldn't deny that if you tried with both hands. I don't deny things with my hand. Nobody said you did. I said you couldn't if you tried. She's in that state of mind when she wants to deny something, only she doesn't know what to deny. Nasty, vicious temper. But I dare say you've not had many lessons in manners yet. Manners are not taught in lessons. Lessons teach you to do sundry things in that sort. Can you do addition? What's one and 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 one? I don't know. I lost count. She can't do addition? Do you know languages? What's the French for fiddle de dee is not English. Who ever said it was? If you'll tell me what language fiddle de dee is, I'll tell you the French for it. Queens never make bargains. I wish queens never ask questions. Oh, don't let us quarrel. Oh, I am so sleepy. She's <sighs> getting tired, poor thing. Smooth her hair, lend her your nightcap, and sing her a soothing lullaby. I haven't got a nightcap with me, and I don't know any soothing lullabies. I must do it myself, then. Hush-a-bye, lady, in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready, we find what a nap. When the feast's over, we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. There, now you know the words. Just sing it through to me. I'm getting sleepy, too. of course. Come quick now.
must support you, you know. Thank you. I can do quite well without. That wouldn't be at all the thing. I rise to return thanks. Thus grew the tale of Wonderland. Thus slowly, one by one, its quaint events were hammered out. And now, our tale is done. issue of the Saturday Evening Post, you will find an entertaining story on the stage, film, and television career of Mr. Morris Evans, our distinguished host and producer of this Hallmark Hall of Fame series. for Wide Wide World as it visits the Wild West. Be taken on a train ride over the snow-capped peaks of the Great Divide in Colorado. See and hear the Mormon Tabernacle Choir in Salt Lake City, their first network television broadcast. Watch the exciting reenactment of El Dorado Days in Tombstone, Arizona, and the premiere of a new symphony played by the Houston Symphony Orchestra with Leopold Stokowski conducting. Be sure to watch for Wide Wide World next Sunday. This is Lee Vine inviting you to be with us four weeks from today when we present The Devil's Disciple with Morris Evans, Ralph Bellamy, and Dennis King. This has been a Morris Evans production in cooperation with NBC. <laughs>